Unser still the leader. Savage second. John Cox third. This could be a tremendous race. And uh, Al Unser going down a little low. I think maybe coming into there's Unser. It looks like he's going to make a pit stop. That could give Savage the lead again. Uh, yeah, yes, he is. Oh my God, it's Savage! Oh! What a God, what a that is the worst thing I've ever seen. Race racehorse anywhere. The tire, one tire was flown 100 feet in the air. I think he's in the, the one to the right. I can't even tell what part. Each part of the car is just disintegrated. The red flag, of course, is that the race has stopped. Sweet Savage is moving inside that thing. The fire there. Now, Sweet is wearing, he is wearing one of these new suits where the foam automatically goes off inside the suit. Only four drivers in the race are wearing it. He is wearing it. If there's any hope, it, it might be in that. Now, how it can be moving, Jim, is beyond me. I've never seen a car just disintegrate like that. Uh, you, you remember, he made a pit stop just a little bit ago. The cars hold 75 gallons of fuel, and he hadn't burned much of that off. The race is hard. Oh, somebody's been hit in the pit. A fire truck. A fire truck racing to the scene has hit a mechanic or somebody in the pit who's going the wrong way through the pit. They're trying to get Savage out of the car. The man was thrown in the air. Hit by a fire truck. Remember now, we're talking about two different people. Savage, Sweet Savage, the driver, the mechanic. The mechanic, a member of... Oh, there he is. The man in the pit. Oh, what a, this 500 has been jinxed from the start, Jim. There's the ambulance coming up to... Remember, that's the, the man that hit in the pit. The mechanic running out to the pit wall. I think he is from one of the Granatelli cars. He might be Sweet Savage's mechanic. Possibly running out to see what in the name of heaven has happened out of turn four. You see, this is visible from the pit area, but just about as they come out of turn four, he hit that wall that you see running off to the left. Incredible. You know, that's the place where Dave McDonald hit the last uh, fatality in the race. He had Eddie Sack ten years ago. That's where uh, Mike Mosley hit uh, Mark Donahue's car two years ago. It's a place where Keith Andrews was killed uh, many years ago at the very same place when it was an earthen embankment. It seems to be a very dangerous place. And just a few moments ago, Peter Revson's car was parked not far from that very spot. Well, here is what happened. Let's see if we can see what happened sincerely. There, the car is out of shape, coming out of turn four. He starts to turn left, and then a hard left turn, coming down straight. God help him for that wall. Looks, uh, looks like it's coming off. It's the yeah. wing came off. The rear wing came off. I'm almost certain. Look at that. The rear wing. the wall. That has 1,600 pounds of down for us. And then, well, I, I, I thought I saw a wheel go tremendously high when it happened. Let's play. the wheel going over toward Bobby Unser across the track. And just Mark. gets by Jim as Mark the car totally explodes to the right. Look, look at that wheel. Look at that, look at that tire. The high into the air is bouncing. It gives you some idea of the force. Some of the energy, some of it at least, being dissipated by all the parts flying off. But the heavier part of the car, Jim, the engine part is on the right, bouncing up and down the track. This could be digging holes in the racetrack, Jim. That's the engine and transmission tumbling. And the driver in that bit of debris on the left. This is Vince Granatelli in the STP pits. You see that his driver and one of his mechanics, we believe. Let's go down to the pits. For the second time in 48 hours, I'm talking with race driver Jerry Grant, who has witnessed a terrible spectacle here. Uh, Jerry, you were about 100 yards, you would estimate, behind Swede Savage when what took place? Well, somewhere there. I was coming off turn four when... Uh, I saw a Swede uh, probably hit the wall, and, and I certainly don't know exactly what happened, but I'm, I'm surmising the track is extremely oily, and everyone that I've been around is slipping and sliding and having a very difficult time. In fact, as we're shooting a complete different line through the turn, instead of going through the groove, we're coming down across the warm-up apron, trying to stay out of the oil, and then coming back across the oil. So uh, I have had... Uh, quite a few near misses and uh, people that I've been following have been slipping and sliding 
and I talked to Joe Leonard back there and uh, George Snyder who were behind me and they said uh, they're all having the same problem and uh, there's oil all over my car. They're, in other words, what you're really saying to me is you've been driving on an unsafe racetrack. Well, it's, it's making an uh, old man out of me. Jerry, uh, when you say that you nearly lost it several times or you had con trouble controlling it there, how difficult would that be? Now, are you merely telling me that you really had trouble keeping your car on the racetrack and keeping it off the wall? Well, when you say uh, lost it, uh, you don't like to drive these cars sideways at the speeds we're going, and there's quite a bit of sideways driving out there because the oil on top of the of the groove, and you have to cross that groove sooner or later, and trying to put the horsepower down, it makes an extremely dangerous, uh, a very tricky situation. And uh, um, Are you interested in going back out there on that racetrack as it is now and putting your life on the line? I would sure like to see the track uh, for an attempt to clean the track up because uh, right now uh, it's uh, a very dangerous situation. Okay, race driver Jerry Grant, who for the second time, as we say, in 48 hours has witnessed a tragedy here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Again, let's see if we can see what happened to that wing, Chris. There is the car out of shape. Back end is out. This is an indication that perhaps he lost the downforce because of the, you know, the movement of the wing. And he's just veering straight across there. Well, watch in here. Watch the wing on the rear of the car. It is moving. It's definitely off the car. I would say before it hit the wall. Oh, easily off before the car hit the wall. And the fuel exploding in the, the rest of the incident. Uh, we have word the mechanic, who it was a mechanic from the Granatelli team, from the car of Graham McRae, the third car in that team. Armand Turand, a young crew member from Culver City, California, is the man who has been taken to the field hospital from the pits. 22 years old. Sweet Savage, the race driver, we have no word on as yet. We have no idea of his condition. He, he, he made a decision to change from a regular driving suit to the foam suit between qualifying and the race. And this foam suit has plumbing in it. And when trouble happens, the foam is automatically fills up the suit. And uh, as far as the fire is concerned, this may have helped him in this area. Well, there's the question of impact of G-forces. There's the question of, of whether or not he inhaled flames. In addition to that, lots of questions unanswered to this point. Savage has been taken to the field hospital. So has the crew member. We'll take a break and come back. <laughs> 